Hi, my name is Nolan, and today I want to show you how I built an underwater metal detector for use on the Sea Perch platform. So it's not um, fully functional, but it's great for teaching concepts of electromagnetic theory using Faraday's Ampere's Law, and also computer programming using a, a microcontroller, as well as how to build a sound amplifier using a transistor. So let's take a look at the device and see how it's working so far. All right, so here's the setup. We have our coil apparatus. So you have two coils of wire right here. You have an Arduino microcontroller that's sending out a signal and then analyzing the signal coming back. And then we have an amplifier circuit right here, which shows a transistor, some LEDs, a potentiometer, a capacitor, a uh, power resistor. And so right now this is being powered by a uh, power supply and um, then we have the signal coming from the microcontroller which is currently being powered by a computer but you can com power it by a battery and then sending the signal into this amplifier which is amplifying that, s that sinusoidal signal and inputting it into this, uh, into this coil apparatus. So unfortunately at this point it doesn't work quite, quite correctly if we pass a uh, piece of metal by it. We can see that there's not much response. We have an oscilloscope that we'll take a look at right here. So as we can see when, when I pass this by, it doesn't make a large change. So unfortunately at this point it's not fully operational, um, but uh, required some coding for this Arduino board. It required um, some knowledge on transistors um, and how uh, frequency response works in, in making this uh, in making this circuit right here, as well as the electromagnetic theory to calculate the number of turns that we used in our um, in our two coils right here. So a little bit later, we're going to talk about how to build this um, and kind of the theory behind it. So the basic concept behind how our metal detector works is we have a power supply that gives us power in, and then a um, microcontroller which sends out a signal, a transistor which combines that power supply and the signal from the microcontroller into a larger current, larger amplitude sinusoid sinusoidal wave, which is then sent to this large coil in the field in the um, in our apparatus, which transmits that electromagnetic field, um, and our pickup coil, the smaller coil. Um, will sense if anything is, uh, is found, which notifies the um, microcontroller Arduino board, which then notifies the user. So that's the basic concept of how this works. It's not quite functional yet, still needs a little bit of work, um, but the theory is very useful and the programming is, uh, is also very educational as well as how we're learning how transistors, capacitors, resistors, and amplifiers work. All right, let's talk about how to build your very own underwater metal detector. Let's talk about the materials and then the tools that you'll need to put it together. First of all, we have our 22 gauge insulated wire, 100 feet. Uh, this will allow the wire to go underwater without uh, risk of it shorting. And it's rated at 900 milliamps, and so the, it won't, uh, we won't have any trouble when we put about 700, 700 milliamps through it. Next we have an Ar Arduino Duet microcontroller and this allows us to send out the signal and analyze the um, signal coming back. You can use another microcontroller if you would like. Uh, I chose an Arduino Duet. And to program the uh, Duet, we will need a uh, micro USB uh, cable. You can use a different cable depending on your microcontroller. And then let's go over the circuit components you're going to need. Uh, taking a look here, we have obviously our breadboard and then we have different, uh, different colors of wire. This is about 20 gauge wire. You can use uh, whatever wire you would uh, you'd prefer, just make sure it fits into your breadboard. And then we have a 20 watt, 15 ohm power resistor. Um, and then we have a 100 microfarad capacitor. You can probably not see it right there. Um, and then a small potentiometer, an LED, and we have a TIP41C power transistor and a heat sink to go with it. Next, let's talk about our coil apparatus. We have our two Frisbees. You can go to the dollar store and pick these up. Sandwich them together and we're gonna wrap our wire around. 
And then I have two lids right here, a super can and a cool whip lid. You just throw one on right there and that'll wrap the coil around and this one keeps the wire on. So should we, we should be good there. And then to hold everything together, you're going to need five eight inch zip ties. And then for your tools, you're going to need um, some wire strippers. You're going to need uh, black, black electrical tape, a cordless drill, and an eighth inch drill bit to drill the holes into your, uh, into your frisbee. All right, so how do we go ahead and build this metal detector? We'll start by assembling the coil apparatus um, because that's the most important part. The size of your coil apparatus will affect the ability of your metal detector uh, to detect metal. The larger the coil, um, the greater distance at which it can detect metal is a general rule of thumb. So first of all, let's take your two um, Frisbees that you purchased and we we'll go ahead and sandwich them together. Now we're going to drill four sets of evenly spaced um, holes around the perimeter. So you can see there's eight holes right here. They're closely spaced and you can take a look at this schematic for the measurements, which is also included in the appendix. Once we've drilled these, then we can uh, put together our Frisbee. So let's uh, go ahead and do that real quick. Alright, now we got our zip ties together and you can see our coil apparatus. Let's go ahead and uh, break off these extra parts right here. Alright, so now we have our frisbees together and uh, oh, give myself a cut. Um, now let's take these two lids right here. You can use a smaller frisbee, that's fine. I couldn't find a smaller frisbee, so I went with a lid from a soup can and this from a Cool Whip container. And so put them on top of each other. And then you're going to want to drill three holes, so two evenly spaced holes. These are already pre drilled. And you want to drill a center hole as well so it allows the air to go through when you submerge it so it doesn't uh, affect the buoyancy of your sea perch. So um, now that those are drilled, let's uh, go ahead and pop our zip tie through. All right, now that we have our uh, coil apparatus, we need to measure the diameter of the field coil and the pickup coil field coil being the large one, the pickup coil um, the smaller one. And so we measure the diameter and then we have to calculate the using Faraday's law and the relationship of the total length of the wire in order to find the optimum number of windings that we have to put on each of these coils. Which is really cool. We can use um, these two equations to find out the number of windings that give us the optimum pickup of the, uh, electro the electromagnetic field. And so see the appendix for the calculations on how to go ahead and do that because the uh, number of windings will change with diameter and so if you have something that, of a different size then you'll need to redo these calculations in order to find the number of windings needed. Alright, now that you've calculated the number of windings for your coil apparatus, go ahead and wind it up. So I calculated 15 for the outer and 30 for the inner. Um, with, the, uh, with the voltages and the amperage um, rating that we have uh, that we plan on uh, applying to it with the amplifier. So you can see the, the appendix for more information on that. So I have 15 on the field coil and 30 on the inside, so that's uh, wound up right there. Um, now let's uh, start with the, uh, let's go to the amplifier. Alright, let's talk about the circuit components of our amplifier. So these amplifiers are really cool. They work on what's called a transistor. A transistor essentially is what makes it all possible. It controls a large current with a small current. Our small current being, coming, being the sine wave from the Arduino board and a large current coming from a power supply. So it accepts those two things and then outputs a new sine wave at the larger current and amplitude. And so our power resistor is supplying the voltage 
or is stepping down the, uh, the current essentially from our power supply because if we just hook this directly to a power supply it would blow up the transistor because it would draw a large amount of current. So this 20 watt 15 ohm resistor steps it down to about, nine, um, about 0.9 volts at the 750 or 700 milliamps. Um, and then uh, our little potentiometer allows us to adjust the current that's going through uh, this transistor so we can take it from 0 to 700 milliamps. Now we have a uh, capacitor as well. The capacitor is a very important component as well because if we didn't have a capacitor we would get back feed into our, um, our microcontroller which would blow it up and the back feed would come from the uh, power supply. So a capacitor has a free, what's called a frequency response. So when you try and um, push a, a sine wave through a capacitor, it'll act as if it was just a wire. It'll connect through. But if you try and push like DC current, like direct current through a capacitor, then it won't work. And our power supply is putting out direct current, but our Arduino board is putting out a uh, sine wave. And so the Arduino um, sine wave is allowed to go through the capacitor but the DC current from the power supply is, isn't allowed to come back, which makes sure that we don't blow up um, our microcontroller, which is quite expensive, and so we don't want um, any circuitry to be damaged. So that's our amplifier right there. Now, next, let's talk about how to program your Arduino. All right, so I've got the Arduino IDE, or the essentially the program that you use to, to uh, um, write the code for your Arduino board. So I've got it up here on my computer. You can download it from arduino.cc. Really easy steps to follow. Um, and then you just go ahead and download it and open it up in your computer. Hook up your USB to your Arduino board. Make sure it recognizes it. And if you have any trouble, there are forums um, online and uh, some great, uh, great tips on how to um, hook it up and make sure it functions correctly. So you just hook that up right there. Make sure the lights are on on your board and then copy and paste the code provided in the appendix into your, um, into your window and then go ahead and click the upload button. So on the bottom it'll say, we'll go ahead and click it, it'll say compiling sketch, it'll take a few seconds and then it'll transfer, you'll see a little blinking light on here that uh, ensures that it is functioning correctly and then it'll let you know when it's finished.